Welcome to Your Strata Property, the podcast for property owners looking for reliable, accurate and bite-sized information from an experienced and authoritative source. To access previous episodes and useful strata tips, go to www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. Hello and welcome. I'm Amanda Farmer and this is Your Strata Property. Today I'm joined by Andrew Terrell. Andrew is a Senior Strata Manager and the Business Development Manager for Wellman Strata. Andrew began his career as a financial auditor and has since accumulated over eight years of experience in the most reputable strata companies in New South Wales. Andrew has been involved in the setup and management of some of the largest and most complex strata schemes in the state. With an eye for detail, he has a deep understanding of the multifaceted structures that exist in strata management, with a focus on the people within these communities. Andrew is excited by the dynamic nature of the strata management industry and is an established member of the professional community. He has dreams for strata managers to improve their knowledge through tertiary qualifications, resulting in better service standards for strata owners. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Andrew Terrell from Wellman Strata. Hello, Andrew. Amanda, thank you for having me involved. Yeah, the bio sounds a lot more wanky. <laughs> having, <laughs> when it's read out loud. read it after uh, me reading through it more than a few times and writing it in the first place. But um, <laughs> thank you for the introduction. Um, so, look, thanks for getting me involved. Strata Education is a big one for me and it's a passion and I love a good podcast. So this is possibly the perfect medium. Great. Um, your Strata property. So hopefully impart some of that knowledge. Definitely. Well, it's lovely to have you. And today we're talking about how strata communities can do a better job of budgeting and setting reasonable and appropriate levies. So I want to start by asking you to tell us why you think, Andrew, a good understanding of budgets and levies is so important for those living in strata communities. More and more people these days are now obviously living and owning in strata and community title properties, less so community title, but definitely strata. It's integral for them to have an understanding of what it is to properly fund their building. And I think many people in the past have have not had that understanding and that could be from one of a number of reasons, Um, a lack of education, a lack of sort of information from the wider community, fair trading, et cetera. Receiving and paying strata levies on time is one thing. Having an active eye on where your money is going is equally as important. Sort of as should be ensuring the owner's corporations meeting its maintenance obligations and also going to improve the building rather than just maintain what's there. So buying a strata is arguably more complex than Torrance title, as you probably agree. Mm. However, the nature of the strata governance means that complacency can easily take over. So hopefully that's something you uh, also agree with. Yeah. You mentioned they're improving as opposed to just maintaining. And I really think that's key and something that a lot of owners, perhaps when they're new to strata, they miss that concept that it's about investing or improving the value of your investment by putting in some money. That's what it takes sometimes. Well, that's exactly it. And if you own a fibro shack on, a, on an amazing block of land, you haven't sort of realized the full potential of that property. And so you knock it down and you build something more valuable. Whereas a lot of strata owners, they buy into these sort of older blocks and they sort of flog the dead horse to a degree. Yes. And we're now sort of at the point where termination has to be a reality because a lot of these blocks aren't able to even be brought up to the state in which they're livable. And it makes more sense to get rid of them to some degree. So anyway, we're at that point now. And I think people are facing that sort of tough reality, which is good. Mm. Unfortunately, we're going we're gonna to have to be the ones that convey it. Mm. And people don't want to hear it a lot of the time. But I think we'll end up sort of with a better result um, once we go through this. Mm. So look, um, look, there's only a small proportion of sort of buildings that I'd call well-funded. Yep. Um, and it's not because the buildings are in well-hilled areas, which is sort of what you'd expect. The people with the money are, are the people that spend the money, but that's definitely not the case. Some mm. of the um, the tighter buildings are, are definitely full of the people with million-dollar apartments. Mm. Um, it's because the owners are well-informed and they're realistic with themselves as to the cost of maintaining their asset. Yeah. That's interesting that you say in your experience it's not necessarily the buildings that may be in more affluent areas or have wealthier occupants. It's about those who are more educated and even though they may have to stretch a bit further to invest that money, they're willing to do it because they understand 
the improvement it's going to make to their building. Well, that's, that's it. And, and Strava is proportional in that if you're, you're in a, a house on your own and you're paying to replace a roof, it's going to cost you the whole cost of that roof. Whereas if you're in a building of eight strata lots, uh, yeah, it's expensive to replace a roof, but you've got eight people to share the cost with. And likewise, replace the carpet, um, paint the building, upgrade the landscaping, all those things which do give you a lot of value back. Mm. Okay. So what do you think, Andrew, the ideal budget for a strata building looks like? Firstly, it should be a really detailed budget. So you should have the line items that properly reflect what your expenditure is going to be over the course of the year. Um, You can't just have a general repairs budget of $20,000 and then just spend from that. Um, You're much better off having the various line items without obviously going to to some nth degree because we're not, I think you confuse people by doing that Mm. and you also very easily get it wrong. But the Act provides for the administration fund at least that you need to be properly recording for your or properly budgeting for your administration expenses, so your operating costs. Mm. So, and then secondly, it should be easily explained. So, once you get to a meeting as a strata manager, you should be able to take owners through it. Um, the executive should definitely be across it. So, yeah, it, it should make sense to owners. So, nobody should be left wondering if they attend a meeting, sort of what was that all about and what did I just pass as a budget um, because they're confused. So, look, accounts for a, a strata property are pretty straightforward. So, you're not dealing with sort of complex cash flow statements. I come from a, an accounting background. Mm. So, I'm not to say that I'm a great accountant or anything, but... I think if you spend a bit of time, anyone can understand a set of general strata accounts. Mm. You've got your balance sheet, which obviously reflects your assets at a certain period in time. And then you've got your profit and loss statement, which is performance over a period of time. So those two things together are any strata's accounts. And and obviously, they're a moving feast year to year Mm. um, and month to month, et cetera. So look, the budget should encompass all known operating expenses and it should at the very least reflect the recommended collection in the sinking fund report, plus budget for the cost of any known sort of upcoming capital works. If you're going to paint that year, get some quotes, present them to the AGM, have the amount in the budget so that the executive can go spend that money when they deem it necessary. So that's the sort of things that should go into a good strata schemes budget. Mm, thank you for that. That's a really good summary. You mentioned there, and I agree with you completely, the more detail the better. And while, yes, there is a risk of overwhelming with detail, in my experience, I see the most confusion and conflict, I guess, come from budgets that are presented with lump sum figures, like you said, 20000 for repairs. That is yep. guaranteed to raise questions at a meeting, if not before. That's right. And people pick up on that stuff mm. and, they, and they'll really harp on about it. Like 99% of the budget might be absolutely great, but then there's this one confusing line item and if you haven't got an answer for it at the meeting, it can certainly derail things. So it, it's very important to sort of be able to adequately convey every single line item and um, whether that be in advance of the meeting by um, sort of issuing an explanation on, on sort of the larger items and some strata companies do it better than others, but definitely at the meeting for, for anyone there, you should be able to, to answer it each and every question they've got. And yep. obviously, it's, it's not hard to put together a budget. It's your your known costs over the, the course of the previous year escalated for, obviously, CPI and whatever increases otherwise. Mm. Um, it's, and then known other costs that you're going to encompass that year. You've got some fire repairs to do, you've got some painting to do, etc. So if anyone tells me that it's hard to do a, a strata budget well, um, <laughs> they're just not spending the time to do it properly. Yeah, and I, I find the other line item that tends to get a lot of discussion and is very important for a committee or a chairperson who's explaining the budget to understand is legal fees. Guaranteed to be the line item that people say, what's that? Why is that there? Why is that double last year's? And my advice to any chairperson who's having to deal with those questions or might be having to face them at an upcoming meeting is know your stuff. Know why you have estimated the amount you've estimated for legal fees because people surely don't like paying them. But it's also something that hurts if it comes up unexpectedly within the next year and it hasn't been budgeted for. Yeah, look, and that's that's exactly right. Certain buildings should, I think the majority of buildings should have some budget for legal fees because- that's what allows you to go redraft your bylaws. That's what allows you to um, deal with the dispute if, if one arises. And certain buildings, you know, are very litigious, unnecessarily so in some cases, necessarily so in others. So, look, legal fees is, is definitely one of those line items and, and people often see it sort of as a, why do we need to spend money on lawyers? But 
that's because you're in such a complex environment and you need to get that advice. And the strata manager can give you a lot of advice, but then there is times, debt collection is obviously case in point, mm. where you need to refer stuff to a solicitor. And often that legal fees budget will be a sort of a net nil amount and mm. people will still jump on it because there's a recovery that's going to come from your debt collection matters. So mm. anyway, legal fees, yeah, I'm sure close to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, close to your wallet as well. So, <laughs> yeah. no, But very important. And, and as sort of development gets so complex, um, it's only going to become a bigger bigger item but yeah I definitely build legal fees into all the all the bigger budgets that I would do yeah good yeah. idea okay Andrew could you share a story with us around how your knowledge and your skills in this area has helped a building yeah sure look, I won't be specific because mm-hmm. I haven't asked any buildings if I can mention them yep but look I've, I've long been an advocate for energy efficiency over probably the last four or five years especially since the um, energy saving scheme has come out which is not run by the government, but it's funded by effectively everyone's energy bills. Yep. Um, so they've, I don't know if you know much about it, but they've effectively put together this fund which people can draw from in the event that they're undertaking energy efficiency projects. And that can be commercial, it can be strata, it can be residential, etc. So look, with the help of some key sort of people in the industry and companies, um, I'll mention Ethan Burns at Sustainability Now, he's been great. Um, we've helped owners corporations save a lot of money through efficiency. That could be lighting works. It could be provisioning such as new electricity contracts. Addressing water use, there's so much wastage at strata schemes because you've got that one lot meter in, yes. in most cases. And unfortunately, people will not fix leaking toilets, etc. So mm. you've got so much wastage on a, a year-by-year basis. Mm. Ventilation upgrades are also a big one like car park fans. Um, you put those on a, a VSD and that, they won't be running all the time and the savings these things generate are actually astronomical. So in some cases, we've managed to cut electricity and water costs by up to about 50%, um, which on a large building, you're looking at, I'll use one example, a building in um, Wallai Creek, we saved, I think it was $100,000. Amazing. Just, and, and that's and that's operating costs. So, and that that's probably, I think their, their electricity budget was probably 18 to 20% of their total cost. So if you think about taking 10% off your admin costs, mm. Where, do you, where can you do that otherwise? I don't think you can. Mm. So it's it's definitely the best bang for your buck stuff that I can recommend. Um, and if we take over a building and they haven't done this sort of stuff, I, I wonder why in the first instance. And then yeah. we obviously take them through the process and set some awesome results. Mm. And that process, is that about sitting down with the figures, looking at the invoices that have come in over the last year and you highlighting areas where you think there can be saving? Yeah. What I was going to add to that is it does take some experience to to breed into the accounts. Yep. And like a good strata manager will be able to pick up an existing set of accounts, know the size of the building, the area the building's in, et cetera, so the level of service it needs and what is it actually paying for? Mm. Like is it getting overkill in terms of its cleaning hours, for example? Mm. Another key one is probably lift contracts. Mm. Um, people sit on these very – old lift contracts which are sort of grandfathered for decades at a time and they're literally 50% more expensive than if they they could go to market. And it wow. it does take a good strata manager to sort of pick that stuff up initially and really do something with it. Mm, great. It's good to know that you guys are out there and that you're, you're focused on these things and you're achieving those kinds of results for buildings. Yeah, well, that's it. There's a, it's very easy to be complacent as a strata manager and think that you're doing your job by simply managing the scheme. And I, I separate myself um, from the term strata management because really we, we are advisors to such mm. an extent and we should be because that's the only way that you show value. Mm. So strata management to me, it's all about skill, care and diligence. And mm. if your strata manager is not showing all of those traits, you should probably be worried. And obviously we come from very different places because there's no defined tertiary path mm. other than a very easy license. But a good strata manager has that relevant experience, has managed sort of the whole range of buildings and will be able to do all those things, take you through a set of accounts, give you their understanding and obviously try and save you some money. Yep, great. I like it. Okay, what are some of the challenges that you've noticed buildings face when it comes to establishing a realistic budget and calculating appropriate levies and what do you think has worked best in terms of overcoming those challenges? Yeah, look, this is a 
one of the, the hardest things to sort of deal with because you've got a lot of buildings where people are acutely aware that they've set unrealistic budgets mm. and will nonetheless continue to do so because the Act doesn't prohibit you from doing so mm. in that you can keep spending from your sinking fund in your admin fund, run deficits, et cetera, and who's going to pick you up on it? Like an owner can't really take you to task at the tribunal for doing such a thing. Uh, and it's very hard to combat that mentality. Like we're not the decision makers, we're advisors, as I just said. Mm. So I guess sort of ongoing warnings around such practices is, is what we do because literally nobody benefits from that situation. Value is not being maintained within the block. Oh, yeah, you're not sort of realising the rents that you should be getting. You're not realising sale prices you should be getting. Work is simply being delayed and the buildings look tired. The, um, the term I'd like to use recently is sort of selling the problems down the stream. Oh, yes. Uh, because they will have to be dealt with by an owner's corporation in time. Mm. And whether that's going to be you as an owner as a result of a legal claim or it's going to be a future owner in their own time and whether it's going to be by way of a special levy or a loan, those problems... I'm speaking very generally here because there's 101 different problems that these things could be. Yeah, they they remain there. Like Mm. there's no getting away from them. Mm. So the education's key. Yeah, you are making it worse. Like you're contributing further to the issue and blowing out your costs. Mm -hmm. And strata buildings are buildings. And as we know, building costs rise each and every year. It's very rare that they retract. So you're effectively just going to spend more money in the future. Mm. So, look, education's key, um, but it's very hard to quantify the benefits of spending the money. Like, there's there's more than a few case studies out there now, but every single building is different. So, to convey sort of the benefits of what one building did to another is quite difficult. Mm. But my advice is a lot of people will sort of come to me for advice about to buy in a particular apartment. And, and obviously, I don't want to give that advice. But what I say is, look, a building with a healthy and readily spent sinking fund that's collecting enough money in the admin fund that has great looking common areas is mm. probably going to be a better building and better funded and functioning than the one with overgrown gardens, a broken intercom, frayed carpet, yep. and a leaking roof. Mm. So there's, there's more to be wary of when buying a strata building than people realise. Yep, good advice. All right. What what are some of the quick wins that some of our listeners might be able to take today to get started with solving their budgeting or their levy problems that they might have in their own buildings? Yeah, well, look, uh, every, every single building is different. And if you are in one of those sort of poorly funded buildings and you can see it's an issue, I'd firstly get to know the legislation, like what's supposed to be coming out of the admin fund, what's the sinking fund supposed to be providing for, is your building meeting its obligations? Mm. Um, because if it's not, you've got to bring that up with the owners corporation at, mm. at meetings, et cetera, and bring it up with the committee. Secondly, if you're not on the committee, jump on the committee. Yep. You're the, the members of the owners corporation charged with identifying and helping to address those sort of issues. And budgeting is a huge one because everything comes from that. Like your service providers are paid for by your budgets, your repairs are paid for by your budgets, et cetera. And look, where there's savings to be made, make those savings. Often it's a question of making other owners sort of come to terms with the real cost of running their building. And it's very hard when I'm on an island trying to convey that stuff. Mm. But once you've got a committee who understands that and will come with you on that and obviously give the support, other owners really do start to understand and their problems, they get used to, oh, okay, I've got to spend a bit more money this year and this mm. is why it's being spent. Yeah, it's kind of like a culture change, isn't it? It is, it is. And and. It, it doesn't happen overnight, but yep. it will happen. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. To use Antain reference. <laughs> All right, Andrew, books. What books have had the greatest impact on you and why? Would you believe that it wasn't Stephen Raff's Strata Living Stories? <laughs> oh, tough one. <laughs> uh, look, uh, flat Chat. Look, no, I'm <laughs> yeah. joking. Flat, flat Chat is, uh, is good but annoying at times because I don't think it does enough to sort of dispel issues. It creates a few. Creates a few, yeah. <laughs> I'll let Jimmy know that. <laughs> Please do. I'm happy to bring it up with him. Look, I'm not a huge book reader of recent, but I'm a massive fan of some podcasts. Um, Great. And that's in my spare time what I do. So Planet Money, I don't know if you listen to to that, but that's really interesting. 600 plus episodes of it and it's basically real life issues around money, whether that be currency, gym memberships, etc. So it's just cool. incredibly interesting. Freakonomics as well is very yes. good. Yep. Tim Ferriss show. Mm-hmm. There's no better interviewer. 
I don't know if you've listened to Startup, but Startup's great. Yep. And then obviously your Strata Property now. Oh, of course. Of course we're on the list. <laughs> Good for the gym or the walk to work. Podcasts are a fabulous medium and I know you and I have talked about this. Just the ease, I find the ease of listening and what used to be dead time for us as busy professionals is suddenly packed with learning and you're getting, you're just adding that value to your day, whether you're at the gym or you're driving the car or you're on the bus or it's fabulous to just have 20 minutes of enlightenment. That's it. It, It's pretty hard to get into reading a book sometimes, whereas it's very easy to listen to a podcast. Yep. And yeah, like my time spent in the car is now a lot more productive because I'm, I'm getting that knowledge. And a lot of this stuff is great talking points as well. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to someone only last night who said that he's become so engaged in some of his podcasts that he's trying to take longer on the drive and hoping for the red lights because he wants to get to the end. Is like, I need to listen to more. <laughs> I think you've got a problem when you get to that point, but that's okay. I'm sure he can wean himself off. Yeah, exactly. Fabulous. Okay, Andrew, so how do our listeners find out more about you and is there anything that you'd like to add before we say goodbye? My LinkedIn's probably a start. Uh, there's a couple of articles on there which I wrote through the course of last year which should give people some insight on um, sort of where I'm coming from. Yep, they're good ones. Likewise, our, our company website and there's some some insights we've learned from buildings we manage and, and projects that we've we've done there that sort of are to the point of what we've discussed today. Look, I'm just excited that Strata's in the limelight at the moment, as you know, with the onset of the new legislation mm. and the huge amount of Strata development that's going on and, and up. There's a lot of information and knowledge out there that there wasn't previously and people are, are really getting it now. Yes. And everyone's going to benefit it as a result. And look, Strata's like anything, the less you know, the more chances people who do know a bit more taking advantage of you. So... Yeah, so get educated. Get educated. And um, if, if you refuse to, you, if, honestly, ignorance is not bliss. Yeah. That's Especially right. when it comes to um, your, one of your biggest assets. So true. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Andrew. It's, um, it's encouraging to know that there are strata managers out there like you who are passionate, who are creative, um, who are highly educated and who are delivering some really good results for buildings. So wonderful to talk to you. And Thanks so much, Amanda. Yeah, it's been great. And look, there is plenty of good strata managers out there. They are out there to be found. And um, look, if, if you're not happy with your res- the results you're getting, I, I recommend going to market and mm. having discussions with these people and spending some time doing that. And I know you interviewed Helen a few weeks ago and mm. I, um, I definitely agree with what she's saying. And yeah, people need to know, firstly, they're getting value from their strata manager and that's not value for money. That is value yep. as a term, a whole term. Yep. Great. Okay. Have a fabulous day. All right. You too. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Your Strata Property, the podcast which consistently delivers to property owners reliable and accurate information about their strata property. You can access all the information below this episode via the show notes at www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. You can also ask questions in the comments section, which Amanda will answer in her upcoming episodes. How can Amanda help you today? 